It's that time again for another episode of Let Me Tell Your Story. I'm Bavali Bernstein. Thank you so much for tuning in tonight. Episode 72 of Let Me Tell Your Story. You know, people often ask me, where do you get the energy to consistently do this every week? And where do you get the stories from? Well, the energy, of course, comes from God, and believe me, it takes a lot. And the stories come from people just like you by submitting them to my email address at letmetellyourstory at hotmail.com. But tonight, I'd like to introduce you to a piece that I actually discovered by going through the pages of my Facebook friends right here on Facebook. Uh, Word Express, that's right, Word Express, in her notes, uh, the CEO had written an interesting piece by the title of Don't Look Back. I found it quite inspiring, and perhaps she will as well. So sit back, relax, and of course, follow along as I read for you tonight, Don't Look Back by Word Express. The only thing a person can ever really do is keep moving forward. Take that big leap forward without hesitation, without once looking back. Simply forget the past and forge toward the future. Can you feel it? Can you feel this urge to transform? Do you feel this desire to step into a new life that defines a new you, a new identity, the real and true spark of the divine that God has placed in you? Many of us are being pushed beyond our comfort zone to places that we've never been before, never dreamed of going or thought we'd go. Now, I'm not talking uh, about physical landscapes, the club you've always talked about going to but didn't, or the vacation to faraway places that you've always dreamed of. I'm talking about trashing old beliefs that keep us stuck, letting go of behavioral patterns that block us from our greater good and blessing. It's the hatching out of the egg, and we're now able to see more of ourselves than we've known before. We're being asked to try something new, to get out of old places where we become complacent. We've been asked to go forward and don't look back. Are you ready or are you holding back? In the Bible, angels arrive in the city of Sodom and Gomorrah and encounter a man by the name of Lot, Genesis 19. Lot, a spiritual man, recognized the angels for who they are and invite them into his home for hospitality. As the story goes, men within the city cause trouble for Lot and the angels. And the angels warn Lot to leave the city before God destroys it. Although Lot receives this warning and takes heed, his family members, in-laws, and uh, children are not so quick to leave. They do not believe that the city will be destroyed. You see, they become comfortable with where they were and were not able to see the need for change. Most people know how the story goes. Lot is instructed by angels to flee the city and don't look back. Lot is what we know today as the change maker. He had taken heed to God's instruction and prepared his family to depart in spite of their stubbornness and disbelief. He not only trusts the guidance he has received from God, but in spite of his old age, he's willing to embrace change for the sake of preserving his family's life. He is willing to move forward and open his arms to new life. But sometimes when we're moving forward, we become engulfed with the feeling of uncertainty and fear stops us in our tracks. I'm sure this is what happened to Lot's wife. Lot's wife looked back while fleeing the city and turned into a pillow of salt. Lot's wife is an example of what happens to us when we become complacent and stagnant in our lives. She was attached to her past. What was and has always been in her unwillingness to stay focused and look forward indicates a resistance to change. Perhaps she was apprehensive about her ability to face the challenge of the unknown. Her fear of beginning again and moving into unfamiliar territory that may require tapping into or locating new resources. Thus, in her looking back into the past, she turned into a pillow of salt. Salt is crystallization. It's when we become hard, brittle, inflexible, and stunted in our growth. Even rocks and boulders must change over time, slowly worn down by the winds or water of change. Embracing change within eventually leads to change outside. It took some time for Lot to persuade his family about the need for change in their lives, and God was patient. Yet Lot only had so many days to change their mind. Only then was he able to change the physical reality of his family. This is what happens for us. 
when we make a different choice, we see the possibilities of a better way. We change our mind, take action, and then change our personal world. On the other hand, when we do not accept change, life becomes painful. The pain stems from crystallization, a pattern that has been reinforced over time. It has been forced to break down. The breakdown can be excruciating. So why wait for time and circumstances to break us down and crack us open? We can step out to our new phase of initiation and make the change. Nobody said that it would be easy to let go and begin in a new direction or a new attitude, but it can be fun if we direct our minds to adventure rather than stubbornly holding back or resistant. Imagine how Lot's wife would have felt if Lot presented uh, the God's instruction to leave the city as an opportunity for a new adventure. Oh, the places we will go. And the day came when the risk to remain tight in a bud was more painful than the risk it took to blossom. Last night, I watched a movie called Maria Full of Grace. In an effort to change her destitute and hopeless circumstances in the country of Colombia, Maria takes her chances and picks up a job smuggling drugs into the United States by swallowing 780 performed pellets of cocaine. The tragic part is that Maria is so desperate she does this at the risk of killing her unborn fetus. Maria manages to slip pads and avoid getting caught at customs because of this very pregnancy. They cannot x-ray her because she's pregnant. The movie plot spirals downward and the situation gets worse. However, while Maria is in the United States, she gets an ultrasound and experiences the reality of carrying a new life within her. In the end, Maria prepares to go back to Colombia, her place of hopelessness. But she is battling within herself the attachment to the familiar, her family. Although they are living uh, in an economically challenged situation, her country, although the lack of jobs leaves no hopes for her and possibly having to marry the father of her child, whom she does not even love, just to survive. Although Maria misses the familiar, none of these situations gives Maria a sense of hope. If she remains, the risk of smuggling cocaine is her own possibility of expanding and making a better living. Maria is in a foreign country where English is the primary language, where she does not speak at all. She's in a country where she does not have citizenship. And the one person she does know, she has to start the relationship by lack of trust. In order for Maria to stay in the United States, she must let go of the old and embrace the new. She sees that she has learned to make her way already in this new country and has done fairly well. She's still alive. Maria's best friend is ready to return to Colombia, but Maria, up to the very last minute, just before boarding the plane, decides to stay. What is the motivating factor that led Maria to stay in the country, where she knew nothing and no one? It is Maria's unborn fetus. She recalls hearing the sound of the baby's heart being constantly uh, looks at the ultrasound pictures, a constant reminder of the new life that is depending and waiting for her. Maria is willing to take risk of living in this foreign country of new opportunity and a birth of a new life for herself and her child. Moving out where we've been into uncertainty and unfamiliar places is scary. But will we let the fear or the unknown keep us back and crystallize us into what is no longer useful to ourselves, our family, God, or the world? I urge you, in spite of your fear, doubt, and apprehensions, move forward and embrace the new and unknown. For all that is unknown outside you is really just the path that leads into discovering unknown parts of yourself. This is the positive experience of personal and spiritual growth. You are so much more than who you think you are. So forge for it, embrace the new and unknown, and enjoy the process of discovering all that you are and don't. Oh,
Oh, oh, oh, oh, oh, oh, oh, oh, oh, oh, oh, oh, oh, oh, oh, oh, oh, oh, oh, oh, oh, oh, oh, oh, oh, oh, oh, oh, oh, oh, oh, oh, oh,